Good morning, everybody, on this nice little weekend. I hope you're all grabbing a coffee or a beer with this price report and see what's in store for us. So today I'm going to discuss some on-chain updates that, that got triggered since last week along with some technical analysis. And in the end, just going to have a short briefing about the global headwinds that's happening. When we start about the psychology of traders and investors, for the last one month, we have been pretty much in fear. And, and this fear was less of a fear, so more of, let's say, a little bit of greed that creeped up into the markets last month. And now, since we saw a pullback from highs of 25,000 down to 20, 21,000, we're back into this kind of this fear zone, right? We're back into the zone. And are we going to last here or are we going to go back up? That's something to be discussed. So in terms of the Bitcoin price action, if you recall from the last time, I did indicate that we are expecting a breakout about August 16th time frame and during that week. And did we, did we did see a breakout. However, I was wrong about the direction where I was expecting a kind of an up move because this is, uh, for this kind of chart pattern, we do see an up move. However, we saw a, a downward breakdown, but it was accurate that there was an impulsive move coming and we are going down in this case. So what does that indicate? You would see this, the line that you see on the top is the, is the 200 day moving average. Let me try to draw this 200 day moving average DMA. And the line that you see below, the blue, light blue line here, is the 200 week moving average, which is the average of Bitcoin's price over the last 200 weeks. And this is the average of Bitcoin price over the last 200 days. So this one forms a resistance going forward. And this one acts as a support going forward. So we are flirting about the 20, how do you call that, the 20, 2000 levels right now we dipped below that so we are dipped dipping below the 200 wma which is found to be a long term support and i do expect us to come back up and you know keep flirting around these lines because that's typically what happens in a bear market should we break down to something like 16 17000 well um, i would again stick to this uh, 200 weak moving average as a long-term support. We can break down, but if should we break down, we should get back above. I mean, this is typically a, a good buying zone historically. In terms of technology, nothing has really, everything has improved in terms of the Bitcoin's technology and in terms of Monero's technology, things have been imp improving. I'm not talking about the other, the shit coins out there, but I'm talking about the main technologies out there. It's been improving. So I'm not really too much bothered I'm just going to keep an eye on the 200 week moving average going forward i am i am showing something called the active address sentiment indicator so what this means is you see these gray lines in between these gray lines are the active address change in percentage how the addresses you know increase with user growth and the 28 day price change. So how fast the price changes in the last 28 days. So this, this is basically a ratio between these two. And you would see that although the, the gray line was trending upwards to an extent, but the price growth suddenly overshot the gray lines. You would see the 28 day price change was 21% while active addresses did not grow as fast. What does that mean? This is kind of like a FOMO kicking in. And when that happens in a bear market, there is a pullback. And that's exactly what we saw. While we, we go ahead and see Bitcoin active addresses, these are the number of addresses that have some sats in it, some Bitcoin in it. And if you see since 2018, this has been forming a lower high. And we've been in this kind of range. Since there has not been a push of active addresses on chain, and what typically happens in a bull market is the active addresses suddenly rises, right? Suddenly rises. 
that means new users are coming into the network and when new users come into the network what happens is the prices are pushed to the upside but that is not really the case right now it's it's kind of lackluster at the moment so we do need active addresses to increase going forward and we can also see this interestingly one good news is the bitcoin wallet sizes with more than one bitcoin has been on a sharp rise that means the uh, the number of wallets with more than one Bitcoin has increased and you would see since 2022. This is an interesting stat because if you go back to the all time highs of 2017-18, the active addresses around the price of 19,000, 20,000, we had 710,000 active addresses uh, with having more than one Bitcoin. Today during this bear market, we are having about 900,000 active addresses around the same price point. That is pretty interesting in terms of adoption, right? And a couple of more things in terms of the rainbow chart pattern. These are the different color codes we see when Bitcoin is in a bull or bear territory. Right now we are in a we are entering the last color code that is about you know it's called the fire sale or buy. It's it's a good long term indicator for the uh, for accumulation zone. So we are still in the long-term accumulation zone for the future. Now I would like to dig into this, the weekly chart for Monero. This is something I showed before the head and shoulder pattern playing out and we being in this kind of like the range and you would see here we are making lower highs. And this is exactly the kind of chart pattern that happens where we see a breakout to the upside. But we have to wait and watch here because I said $135 is, is something that I'm looking at as the lower level support. Of course, 120 is something that has been a long term support with 180 being the next level of resistance about which we want to break open with high volumes. However, if you see the last 90 days of Monero's volume, we were quite lackluster before. However, lately, it has so happened that we have gained back a volume of our 140 billion, 140 million dollars. And what could potentially happen is some sort of short squeeze incoming in the coming days where it can take us to the upside. So that is what I would see going forward. So I still stick to my previous analysis that I had the last few weeks. And the last part is the they talk about global headwinds. What's going on around the world? I know, you know, we have been all following the news of Russia and Ukraine and Europe going into an energy crisis. The Euro USD is back to parity again. And I expect the Euro to fall against the US dollar coming days and weeks and months. And that is because a number of factors in key play right now. The, the rivers in Europe, uh, in some of the countries are drying up because of the heat wave that has been happening. In fact, I just heard that uh, one of the rivers in popular rivers in, in France got dried up. Uh, that's quite saddening. So all of this is having some sort of impact going forward and the Taiwan China crisis that is happening. I know US is trying to defend Taiwan, but more so for the reason that they don't want their own gross domestic product GDP to be affected going forward because if China takes over Taiwan well democracy is on one side that is great but more so it's detrimental to the United States because Taiwan if China gets Taiwan that means that uh, almost 40 percent of the world's GDP will be in the hands of China and that is not a very good news for the US. So a lot of uh, mess up is happening around the globe we have to see because how it affects the global supply chain. That is a big factor for also pushing up the prices across the globe and also inflation. So I hope things improve. And, and this also has an invariable effect on the prices of assets. That is all from my side for this week. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead and see you in the next price report. Bye-bye.